Northern Ireland is set to impose a four-week circuit breaker lockdown and a bid to stem cases of COVID-19, something the Labour leader, Sir Keir Starmer, is also calling on Boris Johnson to do in England. So we are joined now by the Shadow Cabinet Minister, Rachel Reeves, for the Labour Party. Very good morning to you. Can I ask you, good Rachel, morning. before we get into this, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, what's your view of this transgender sport debate? Because when I had Lisa Nandy on, she got herself into quite a difficult position where she appeared to be suggesting that it'd be fine if... Floyd Mayweather and Usain Bolt transitioned and competed against women born to bi female biological bodies. What, what is your view about how we get through this? World Rugby has now banned trans women from playing at high level in rugby. It's not something I've given a huge amount of, of thought to, um, uh, Piers, but I, I do think that, um, you know, trans rights must be respected. People don't change their, uh, um, don't, don't, don't have a, a sex change and go through all of this so that they can, um, you know, compete in a, in a sport for, for a women's team or, or a men's team. Uh, that's not well, the reason why people do this. For and, most of the, you don't have to. That's the, that's the whole point, is that you don't have to. You just have to re slightly reduce your testosterone level. So Floyd Mayweather and Usain Bolt could transition in that sense without any surgery and compete in women's sport. Do you think that's fair? I haven't looked into the details of, of this. I, I, I don't really? know the, the details. Been issue for years. I haven't heard. And I, I haven't heard what you've been saying about it this morning, so I'm not going to comment on, on something that I haven't given uh, thought to. Well, but a simple, uh, a simple I think question is: World, to... World Rugby has announced that trans women uh, who were born to male biological bodies cannot compete at high level in women's rugby. So the simple question is: Do you, as a a senior member of the Labour shadow cabinet, do you think that's a good decision or not? I'd, I'd have to look into the detail of what the decisions have been um, made. I, I don't like to just, you know, come out with um, a, a view on, on something without looking at the evidence and without giving it some consideration. And I, I don't think politicians or anyone should you know, should do that without looking at the details first. And I'm not going to do it on your programme this morning. I mean, Labour politicians have been pretty vocal about this. They've been leading the charge, actually. Well, saying, I would and, they, want... and they believe that trans rights uh, should be completely respected, even if even if it damages women's sport. That's been the party's position, really, in the ones I've spoken to. Well, I would want to look into the details of this. It's not what I've come on to talk about this morning. I, I don't like to, uh, to, 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 to come to views without looking at the evidence. And so I would want to look at the information of, of what has been announced and, and what different people say about it before coming to a view of my own. But I absolutely believe in uh, that trans rights should be uh, respected. And, and, and I don't believe that it had to be in a situation where the two sets of rights come into to conflict. And I don't like what some people try and do, which is play off uh, women's rights across against uh, trans rights, because I, I don't think you have to have that debate. But th that's not what I came so on do, to speak about. So you do about. have a view, the, then? The, 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 that's not what I came on to speak about this morning. And this well, specific no, hang issue. on, listen, you're a this shadow cabinet issue. minister. You don't just come on to talk about one thing. This happens to be a big issue that's blown up this week. World Rugby have announced it. It's causing a huge amount of debate around the world. I'm, a, I'm surprised you don't know about it. And B, I'm sorry, if you come on this programme as a shadow cabinet minister or cabinet minister, you should expect to be asked about anything that's been in the news that has serious consequences for cross-sections of the community, shouldn't you? Well, we're facing a global pandemic at the moment. Labour made important announcements yesterday about the need for a circuit break to protect our NHS, get control of the virus and sort the test and trace system. My focus has been 100% on that because I think that's the focus of the country uh, right now. And it's really important, given the numbers that we've seen yesterday with 17,500 new cases of the virus, 143 deaths yesterday, that the government act urgently. They got this advice from SAGE three weeks ago and failed to act. We have now seen from SAGE the minutes of that meeting. We're urging the government to do what they said they were doing earlier on during this pandemic, and that was act on the science. The government are no longer doing that. Okay. That is a grave mistake. Rachel Rees, can I just ask, are you acting on the science? Or are you acting on the criticism that the Labour Party has not been strong enough in its opposition to what the government has been doing. For instance, on the 10 p.m. curfew, we've spoken to a number of your representatives who cast doubt on that, are not sure that there was science. We know that there was no scientific modelling done for that, and common sense tells us that the 10 p.m. curfew just does not uh, work. It just brings people together. We saw the scenes on the streets of Liverpool last night. However, the Labour Party hasn't been strong in its criticism of the 10 p.m. curfew, or voted uh, against the government on these measures. Yesterday was the first time we've seen the Labour Party actually put an alternative out to the country. 
Well, the call for a circuit break that Keir Starmer made yesterday is absolutely based on the science. On Monday, we saw the minutes of that SAGE meeting from three weeks ago that hadn't been uh, published and, until that point, calling for a circuit break and saying that the actions, including the tiered system that the government have just introduced, do not go far enough in getting control of this virus. So our call for a circuit break is very much based on the science. Okay, so tell yesterday us about in that Parliament, science because... Yeah. A two-week circuit breaker sounds like an excellent idea, except that no one wants to go back into national lockdown and the economic effects could be disastrous. As we know, they've already been very, very damaging. What does the science tell us about a two-week circuit break other than, as we know from the first lockdown, you've suppressed the virus for the period of time of the lockdown, but as soon as you lift it after a fortnight, the virus just re-emerges? Well, what the sage scientists, what the sage scientists say, is that a two or three week lockdown would swap two weeks of growth uh, in transmission for two weeks in decay, and you would go back 28 days in terms of um, the, the the virus, which buys us time, and we should use that time wisely use that time to fix the failed test and trace model. And I'm leading a debate in Parliament today calling on the government to end the failed outsourced circo model of tracing and instead bring that back in-house to local authorities and local communities who know their areas best to get control of this okay. virus. At the you moment, we're only you, seeing... You are confident that despite the, the shambles of the test and trace system, since the beginning of March... In fact, even earlier in the year, when the World Health Organization said the key to get through this was test, 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 you're convinced that after all the months of the pandemic, we can fix that system in two weeks? Well, the, the World Health Organization did call for that, and the government should have used the lockdown that we had in the spring and summer to get control of, of the virus with a proper test and trace system. What you see in Wales, where they do do the contact tracing at a local authority level, is that they are, um, they are contacting more than 90% of the people who have come into contact with somebody who has tested positive for the virus. In England, in the Circo model, we're only contacting around 70% of the people. Now, in Oldham, for example, where the local authority there did start doing their own contact tracing at a local level because the Circo system was so shambolic, they again got their contact tracing levels up to above 90%. We know that the model the government is using is not working. If, if so the we government could doesn't follow... Hand those responsibilities if the government... to local authorities right, if, if... so that we have a much clearer understanding of the transmission and the hotspots in local okay, communities. Okay. And at the end, local directors of public health know their area much better okay, okay. than executives or if call government... centre handlers at Serco. If the government ignores you and chooses not to do a circuit breaker, what will you do as a party? Well, we will do everything we can, and we're pleading with the government, pleading with the Prime Minister to, to, to take a different course now. The Prime Minister and the government are going down one path. It's the wrong path. We refuse, urge them to think again, and we've and offered... I mean, if they refuse years. and bring in other restrictions which you don't think will be effective, will you vote for them? We've, we've offered, peers our support to take this circuit break through the, the House of Commons. We've tried to be a constructive opposition. We've tried to support the government. Yeah, but now you've but taken the gloves off. Mistake. With respect, Reggie, you've now taken the gloves off, which is what many people have been calling for. There's a logic to your position, which, which there isn't to a lot of Boris Johnson's pronouncements at the moment. But my question is, if the government, which you have so far supported every step of the way on every measure they brought in. If they, if they decide to totally ignore you and you think there's a genuine imminent threat to public health and life in this country, what will you as a party do? Will you start to vote against other government policies to register how enraged you are that they are potentially putting our lives at risk? Well, first of all, we have opposed and we have um, put forward constructive suge suggestions on, on PPE, on, on testing, on tracing, on support for the self-employed. So we have um, um, put forward those suggestions in the past and the government have eventually accepted them. And we hope that will be the case with the circuit break. And Keir Starmer offered yesterday with work to work with the Prime Minister to introduce it. We will support 
or measures that help get control of this virus. But Sage are saying, and Labour are saying, Keir Starmer said yesterday, that the measures taken so far are not going to do that. And that's why we're urging the government to do okay. more and to do it quickly. Sage made these recommendations three weeks ago. Back then, the number of new cases on a daily basis were 4,500. Yesterday, it was more than 17,000 and 143 people died, the highest number of deaths for four months. The government now need to urgently take action. They can't uh, okay. sit this out for another few weeks. This is urgent. This is for now. Rachel Reeves, thank you very much indeed.